What is going on, good people, NFL picks? We got the whole crew. You saw them? I just gave you a little preview, just a little bit, just a little preview of them. So you know we got a whole crew tonight for the picks. The picks crew is back, and it's always different. We never know who is going to be on the picks crew. But we're going to discuss week two. We're going to discuss uh, week three, of course, coming up this week and, and what happened in week two, what kind of surprises, what do we think. But first, I want to... I want to spotlight some people, you know, I want like, it's week two, you know, and Casey, Casey and I have talked about this before. We don't know what Corona season is going to have in store for us. We really don't. We have no idea. We're looking at teams and we're like, you know what? You're good. But then we're like, maybe you're not as good. Maybe you're not as good as we thought you were. So like, we don't know yet. We still don't know. But week two, I think we got a decent idea of, of how teams are, a relative idea. I don't know if we'll really know until about week four. Uh, you know, I feel like we won't know until about week four. Week four, we'll be like, you know what? That team's pretty good. That team, they, they kind of suck. Not even going to lie. But uh, we got it, – it's interesting because we have uh, fans from four different fan bases here. Me, of course, <laughs> being a Ravens fan, you can see it behind me. Justin beside me being a Chiefs fan, which, you know, we'll have that discussion a little bit later uh, as we go at it in Monday Night Football. And then – Casey being a Colts fan, you know, um, never know what you'll get out of them. And then <laughs> Adam here at the bottom is a Browns fan, which also you never know what you'll get out of them. Uh, so, you know what? Just starting with a new voice, a new feel, a new face. Let's start with Adam. And I, and I just want to see, like, bring me into the mind of a Browns fan right now. What's the direction of the Browns? Do you like Baker Mayfield? I personally love Baker Mayfield, but do you like Baker Mayfield? Do you like the weapons? Is it too much? Is there too much going on? There's too much hype. What's going on, Adam? Well, yeah, well, well, the 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 problem, the problem is is like every every year, we are the masters of the off season. That that you get. A, 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 whether it be through the draft or through free agency, and and Cleveland fans, you know, get excited, and there and there's nothing wrong with that. But then it becomes, you know, first game hits, and then it's all same old, same old. This year in particular, I mean, for week one was against Baltimore, new coach, new offensive scheme, all that jazz. You 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 essentially. And not having a legit offseason, you essentially were trying to have a team do a make good and try to install their new offense against a potential Super Bowl winning team with the current MVP from a year ago. So it, in a regular season, or in a regular, you know, no pandemic or anything like that, it was a tall ask anyway. Like that game, if that was like 38-17, 38-20, I'd have been fine. I was not expecting just six points. And everybody already was jumping off the Baker bandwagon. You can ask Casey, because I've, I've said this, you know, for like the last couple of years. Now, like, I love him. He's the best QB we've had since coming back into the league in 99. S Still a long way to go, whatever, but like on that long list of that infamous jersey, it needs to stop at him. <laughs> We've been I searching. I, I, again, it's it's pretty sad. Like we, we could be here forever with all the names that's on that on that jersey, that infamous jersey of that fan. What's that? Brian Hoyer is the only other Browns quarterback that had a winning record. I like Brian Hoyer. I he was he was the he was the perfect professional backup to have. A guy that he's granted he had, you know, a, gave them a little spark. You know, they were that was the last time that the Browns maintained an above 500 record for more than 2 weeks. Um I I I liked him. He was a he's a Cleveland boy, you know, so that that added added to the mix. He's not he's not Bernie Kosar, but he was the last time that we actually got some excitement from a Cleveland quarterback's, you know, play. But I I love Baker. I think he's exactly what they needed. Uh, again, he I just wish he had more more consistency because one week he looks like exactly why they drafted a number one. And then next week, you know, the following week after that, then he has a whole bunch of questions. But 
with where they're at now. Yes, I'm, I'm biased. They have the best running back tandem in the NFL with Chubb and Hunt, or as I call them, Chubba Wubba Hunt. Um, I can see that. Yeah, and I and you know, and I know, and I know, especially with, with a lot of Cleveland fans, they're wondering like, when's Odell gonna be the Odell of old? And at least on the surface, Thursday you saw that that just needs to happen from here on out. He doesn't need to have. 15 catches for, uh, you know, 200 yards every game. He just needs to have those one or two impactful plays. And then the rest will take care of themselves, whether it be through the run game, short intermediate game, what have you. And Brown's defense right now is good up front. They're very bad in the linebacker and uh, part of their secondary is banged up. But so I, I'm, I'm, I'm having – you know, like I'm excited where they're going, whatever. Though I just you know tread cautious, you know cautiously because, you know, it could it could change in a, in a drop drop of a dime if if history shows it like that the last few years, especially last yeah. year. And, and you know, like you said, the Browns are missing some pieces. Uh, of course, you know the secondary is banged up. That hurts all the time. Um, and, and then, of course, you know, you guys got a really good front seven, I feel like, especially the front four. Mm-hmm. You know, being up there, Miles Garrett, of course, one of the best. Five-star Porter Gustin, who had a monster game on Thursday. Right. So, I mean, you know, I think there's promise for the Browns. I think a lot of people just look at the Browns as a bad team because they're the Browns, and they've kind of made that reputation for themselves. Mm-hmm. But I think at the same time, like, like you said, Baker's giving y'all a little bit of hope, uh, and and Baker's shown some flashes here, and he's shown some negative things there. But I think we got to remember too the way Baker is. Baker is a risk taker. Baker is a is a guy who's going to take his chances. He's going to take his lumps. He's gonna he's gonna run around a little bit, and he's gonna make some plays that sometimes make you scratch your head. But some of those plays that make you scratch your head are the same plays that turn into the bigger game. Too. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and what what what, ha- what sucks before is that the guys from the past, Cody Kessler, D- Deshaun Kaiser, uh, the guys that were not put in the best position, they were they were called to action way before they were actually ready. I, that's why I was mad when they got rid of Josh McCowan, who again is a guy like a Hoyer. He's a professional. He's going to go in and he's going to do what you asked him to do. But, hell, I, I believe this was 24 – no, 2015. It's the year they drafted uh, Johnny. And their first drive against the Jets, they're going down the field, they're cooking, and all of a sudden Josh McCowan thinks he's 25 again and tries to scramble into the end zone and he helicopter spins and is out for a few weeks. But once he came back, you could see that veteran presence there. Like, he would have been perfect for Johnny. But then you realize, you know, Johnny didn't give, you know, two bleeps about a playbook. Um, yeah. But with, with mean, Baker, you can – Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, and with I, Baker, you, I do like the gunslinger mentality because, like, I've, I've heard that comparison, whether it be – Drew Brees, and and that's because more of the height thing, which I find hysterical. I mean, he's he's six one, you know. So I know he's he's not, you know, Big Ben. He's not Brady. He's anything like that, whatever. Though, but the guy is strong. Like it, he's deceptively he's deceptively thick too. I think that's the other thing that uh, people miss out on. But his type of play, that gunslinger mentality, you can live with live with a pick or two here and there. Now now. There have been times where again his a lot of his thing is not it's not so much his decision making on throwing the ball it's the decision making not pulling the trigger of holding on to the ball too long and then that may lead to a pick and whatnot it's like dude you were the guy that was a walk on in Oklahoma and, and said I'm going to be your quarterback and he has had had one of the better seasons in college football history. That was obviously, you know, overtaken by Joe Burrow last year. But, yeah, I like the moxie. You know, I, I love the swagger. 
Some people view that as as arrogance. I, you know, again, it's to me, it's not it's not so much that when when he can back it up, because when again when he's on, the, the, I I say that guy is definitely a top top uh, echelon uh, quarterback in this league. Well, I think too, you know, and an issue that a lot of teams that lose more games than they win, what happens is they get these quarterbacks. And they number one, there's no consistency with the coach because they're firing the coach every other year or something like that. They're firing the coordinators every other year, and then two, the fa- so that makes the fans fall out of love with them, right? Because they're, they're struggling. But like, not everybody's coming coming in and gonna have these weapons that Patrick Mahomes has or have this crazy athleticism that Lamar Jackson has. Like, right. There, there's things that that these guys are doing because of the weapons around them or because they're just ridiculous in, in well, and and one thing you brought up coaching Lamar being in that in the same system that that Harbaugh and Roman Greg Roman had been working on the last few years they catered that offense to Lamar's skill set same thing with uh with Mahomes he was under the tutelage of working under Alex Smith but once Mahomes was ready Andy Reid Great, great coach. Whatever, though, knew exactly what to do with him when the time was ready. And then you had, and you, you've got Kelsey, you've got Hill. Now they, they had Hunt, whatever. Now, but now this new guy Edwards is Hunt Light. You know, he's in that same echelon. But that was the other thing I'll say with Baker is I'm not saying you have to feel sorry for him. I don't want necessarily that, but you have to understand too. This is he's on his fourth coach in three years since he's been in the league. Now that's that's an organizational from the top at more than anything else. Yeah, and I, and you know I think too. Yeah, I talk about Washington a lot because they're they're kind of a close team, and I have friends that are Washington fans, and like they're another team that like I like Dwayne Haskins. You can't give up on Dwayne Haskins yet because we haven't seen enough from him. Like like let him take his lumps, let him get sacked a couple of times, let him throw some interceptions. Like quarterbacks do that. that that's mm-hmm. kind of like the. That's the name of the position. As much yeah. as it is down, it's like interceptions and then learning from those interceptions. I mean, and let's be honest when we talk about Dwayne Haskins. I mean, his receiver talent isn't great. Terry McLaurin's a stud. But other than that, I couldn't name another receiver. I can only name Logan Thomas because he's a tight end and he used to be a quarterback. That's the only reason he's unproven. So, I mean, who's their running back? I don't know. Right? I mean, Darius have- Geist has uh, never stayed healthy. Never stayed healthy and then got himself out of the league, yep. pro- probably. So, wh- what do you expect? Why do you expect these guys to be good? Yeah. Um, well, and I think Dan also Dan Snyder is a moron. Yeah, I, I agree with that too. I, I agree with that too. And then um, to segue, I guess into Casey's thoughts on the Colts. Uh, even with Jacoby Brissett, it was kind of like we want to believe in him, but we don't believe in him, but we might believe in him. But let's bring in Philip Rivers to to teach him, maybe you know, maybe to mentor him a little bit, and then they're gonna move on from him because because I don't think they're going back to Jacoby Brissett. I don't I don't know how Casey feels, but I don't see it. I I feel like they brought in Jacoby Brissett to kind of be a placeholder for the Andrew Luck retirement, and then they brought in Philip Rivers, and then they're gonna end up drafting somebody. I think that's how this gonna go. Uh, Casey, how, how you feeling about you know your, your Colts so far? You know through two weeks. Yeah, I I, I think as far as uh, Jacoby Brissett, I I think he's more of a you know at at this point more of a backup. You know, God forbid if something happens, um. And and not a backup like Curtis Painter because Curtis I never want to think about that again. <laughs> oh. The the darkest period in cult history. Hey, at least you didn't have Clipboard um, Jesus. I, Charlie Whitehurst. <laughs> I I just remember the first the first NFL game I ever went I mean, to was in Buffalo. On, you guys had like with, with the bad, Colts. You got you guys went from went from Peyton Manning to one bad year to falling into Andrew Luck. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was it was my first first ever NFL game and right before halftime they put in Curtis Painter and it was just all downhill. All downhill. Um 
but yeah, I, I think Brissett's just going to be more of a, you know, backup. Um, again, like I've been saying, I don't know if we're really sure what Philip Rivers we have. Um, I, I think, and and I think, you know, all of us or must, most of us can agree that Philip Rivers is a good quarterback. He just hasn't had, I, I don't know if it's just, he hasn't had the great team or just the bad luck. Um, but I would love to see him have a good season. I, I definitely, I think he deserves it. And I think he could definitely have that with the Colts. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's waiting to see what Philip Rivers we get. Um, same with, you know, we were talking about uh, last week, um, Tom Brady. You know, we didn't know what Tom Brady was going to look like outside of New England. Um and I, and I think uh, week two, we kind of saw a little bit. But, um, again, kind of like, you know, uh, with, with Adam and the uh, the Browns, it's kind of, you know, cautious optimism, I, I think. You know, it's, you know, take it week by week. You know, not, not necessarily, oh, we're going to go to the Super Bowl or, oh, we're going to go to the playoffs. It's just, let's let's see how this goes, especially this season where, you know, we were talking about how we didn't have the preseason, so you kind of really didn't have that, you know, those kind of throwaway games where you kind of see, you know, who, you know, who you want to put where, who you want to start, all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I think that, you know, people don't realize how important those um, preseason games are. I, I Again, I don't necessarily think we need four, but like at least two just to kind of see where you're at. Um, and, and the fact that we didn't have that kind of uh, hurts a little bit. Um, but, you know, again, I, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. I, I think we can do well. It's just, you know, with, with everything with COVID, it's, it's hard to tell anything right now, I, I think, with any of the teams. Well, we talked about it, too, with injuries. And, I mean, we saw a ridiculous week full of injuries last week. Um, it was it was either ACL or Achilles or high ankle sprain this Sunday. It was right, it was right. insane. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I mean, it was one of maybe the worst injury weeks I think we've ever seen. Saquon went down. Nick Bosa went down. George, I think George Kittle went down. I think I think Kittle was was week one, but they lost Solomon Thomas. Uh, Garoppolo is is not going to be. It's not season ending, whatever though, but uh Raheem Moster, whatever though, like like vital parts to their Super Bowl team, whatever though, like a good a good chunk of that is gone. They're still deep, so I mean I I still believe in them in, in that regard, whatever though, like they've got the Giants, you know, not to get too far ahead. They got the Giants this week, whatever though. And to me that's a game that you can quote, get well on, because, I mean, the Giants are, are absolute garbage with or without Saquon. Well, I mean, I mean, so is that entire division. <laughs> what, what, what that's why doing? that's why can't nobody can sleep on Philly. They just have to stay nose to nose with Dallas. And there yeah. it could be like last year and they sneak in at seven to nine. Yeah, right. It, I mean, and they they even gave him an extra playoff spot, so. You know, that kind of helps, yeah, you know. Yeah. They, they gave an extra playoff spot to make sure that Dallas does get in. Uh, in terms of, uh, Justin, what, what about the Chiefs? I know you're pretty comfortable uh, sitting on sitting on that Super Bowl ring. Uh, I, know, I, know you're- I mean, after watching after watching last week, you know, I, you know, I thought, you know, um, when we were playing the Chargers, I thought, you know, Ty, Tyrod Taylor, was, we were going against him. I go, like, you know, we, you know this is going to be an easy win. But actually, the Chargers, they – their defense, like they always play really tough against the Chiefs. Every single year, we always kind of struggle a little bit with the Chargers. But I was surprised with Justin Herbert when he came in, like how well he was doing. Like, I mean, yes, I mean, our D- defense isn't the greatest. I mean, our our line, our D our D line isn't bad, but our secondary, we need to get better in that. Like, I mean, yeah, we got Honey Badger, but our secondary is really still struggles a little bit, but you know, I like, you know, we've been down by worse before. I mean, last year in, you know, or, you know, earlier this year in the playoffs, you know, every single game we were down. 
So I really wasn't too worried about it because I got like, Patrick Mahomes. We're just going to do a big comeback in the fourth quarter, and we did. And so, I, you know, I'm sitting pretty comfortable with the Chiefs right now. Um, it's going to be very interesting this week, but, you know, with the Ravens coming up. But I, I think it's going to be – it's going to be interesting here what happens. It's going to be fun. Chiefs have owned the Ravens last yeah. few years. So we have, it, yes. We have. I don't even think yeah. it's looked good. I'm going to be honest. Not like The scores have looked good at the end, but we've been down mm-hmm. two, at least two scores in all of those games. Like, yeah, like, but, it, at, but now at this point, now they have a full, a full, a full complement version of Lamar where yeah. he, he still, still has – Gus said words. You still got Ingram. I mean, they have the 18 tight ends, which I'm not going to lie. As much again, obviously, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to say hate because I, 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 I hate Art Modell, not the Ravens. But, <laughs> but, um, but it's but yeah, you're 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 getting you're getting Lamar now, uh, second second full season as the starter, whatever though. And then I mean, my God, he he was what. 20 of 25 week one get against us and which Cleveland actually held the running game, you know, to a, you know, to a minimum, like they only God they had between Edwards and, and, and Ingram, they were like three yards of pop, whatever though, but it just, and, and then he, we were actually getting pressure, but you know, again, Lamar calm, cool and collective just, it was just zipping the ball all around the yard, whatever though. But either way, that that Monday night game is going to be so much. Fun. It's going to be a shootout. It's going to be like this game. Um, well, I think it was a couple years ago, maybe. It was with the Rams and the Chiefs. Like we were just going touchdown for touchdown, back and forth. It was it a could Madden be like, game. Yeah, it was a Madden game. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was about to say. Just it was a Madden game. Scoring at will. Yeah. And this is what it's going to be. It's going to be a Madden game here, dude. It's just yeah, it's going to be back and forth. Yeah. And whoever has the ball last is going to win. Right. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I think I think it's going to be good. I, I for, for our defense's sake, I hope it's not a Madden game because uh, I think we have a pretty pretty good defense. Uh, so it wouldn't. I mean, but albeit you know playing against an MVP, a Super Bowl MVP, and one of the most ridiculous quarterbacks in the league right now. I mean, you, you'll take the win over a good defensive performance. I feel like. Uh, yeah. I mean, in terms of the Ravens, I, I'm I'm sitting okay. Uh, the playoff monkey still haunts me a little bit. It's like the uh, monkey in Chris's closet at this point. Uh, it, it still haunts me a little bit. But, it, it, I mean, it's been one full season and a half a season uh, for Lamar. So, this is his second full season. So, I can't, I, you know, I can't be too upset. He's got an MVP. Um, you know, he, he eventually, you know. The, the Madden curse is coming back this year. I mean, it's, it's hitting everybody but Lamar, I feel like. And that, that's, I mean. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. Cause no, nobody wants to see anybody get injured. But, of course. I, mean, I just hope that Lamar avoids it. I mean, Lamar avoids it. Uh, so that's just, that's just me. But I mean, I'm, I'm sitting okay. Uh, you know, like Adam said, I, you know, he, he, he's done a good job of kind of having to throw the ball a little bit more, I think. I don't know if teams are keying in on him or they're just doing a good job of containing. You know, teams are doing a very good job against Lamar containing him uh, and not letting him break out, even with Reed last week. Uh, making that little kind of shoestring tackle that, that I mean, last year that was a touchdown easily from Lamar. You know, mm-hmm. Rushing touchdown last year and, you know, getting that little shoestring tackle to, to, to take him down. Um, you know, I, I mean, I think they're doing pretty good. The offense looks like it's picking up where, where it's left off, um, adding another running back in there. Gus is a stud. Uh, you know, I feel like – Ingram. Stud. Mark Ingram is, is definitely a stud. Um, and J.K. Dobbins just gets better and better every week. Um, and he had a big run at the end, you know. So, I mean, he, he's going to come, you know, come to his own. I just don't know how the heck they're going to use all of them because every week I'm like, I don't know who the heck they're going to use that running back today. Cause well, is it one of those – each week one of those guys is is going to be a matchup nightmare. Like one week – I mean, Ingram and, and Gus are, are going to be your standard, you know, bell count. But there's going to be a week where J.K. – it's like his he is going to be a uh, because he, he to me is like for you know you know what it's worth like the Browns whatever though where you can split him out wide because I mean I'm as you know I, I'm a massive Buckeye I'll say uh, Buckeye fan so again like I followed I followed him Zeke 
anybody that's come through McLaurin, you know, all that stuff. Like JK is, is a, is a match matchup nightmare for like for the linebackers and whoever is in the nickel and is covering down in, in the box. Um, but yeah, he, he can be, he is good. He is going to be a perfect like flex position. Uh, like if you play draft Kings or something like that, cause he'll, he'll be a monster down by the goal line. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think so too. Um, you know, I, and, and as far as like, you know, the offense, I think is going well. I think Lamar seems like he's throwing the football better. Um, even though I thought he threw the football last year, I think he had a little bit of something to prove last year with all the haters. And I think he still has a, I, I, I don't think he ever will lose the chip on his shoulder that he can't throw. I think that's going to like just be this thing that, that's going to fuel him. And that's, that's the thing I love about him is like, you know, he takes all this criticism and then just learns from it and gets better from it. Um, and, and that, that's what's kind of amazing about it. Uh, in terms of the defense, Tavon Young's out for the year. Um, that, yeah, I've seen that on Twitter. Yeah, that kind of – that hurts a little bit because they want to play Jimmy at this, like, hybrid safety type deal. And Anthony Avery ain't, gonna, ain't it right now. Um, he's there, but he's just not playing the football as well as he should be. And Jimmy is a formidable corner. And nobody will say it. I don't know why. Nobody will just say – I mean, Jimmy's a top ten corner with not, but doesn't have the top ten accolades. He doesn't have the top ten credit. That's all that is. And when Jimmy Smith's out of the lineup, I've watched this defense when not, with him out of the lineup, and I've said it multiple times on the show. It, it's just the defense just falls to shambles. He got hurt last year, and that's where the entire collapse happened with the defense and they had to bring in all these new pieces. That's that's why Marcus Peters came because Jimmy Smith got hurt. That's all. That and, and I was just about to say, and Marcus Peters, who was doing nothing with the Rams. Which like that was just more of a culture thing. He comes he comes to Baltimore and he had like a handful of interceptions that week. <laughs> I can't even remember. I might have been in Seattle. He just said, "Oh, all right," and was snagging footballs out of the backfield left and right. Whatever though, that was a perfect perfect scenario. Yeah, he he's he's like the perfect corner for us because he's physical. Yes, you know he he, he just fits fits the bill so perfectly. And, mm-hmm. and then, you know, and, and we're about to get into kind of our thoughts on week two and then jump into week three uh, quickly here too. But I think in terms of like, you know, I had been saying like, I think we need to get a number one receiver. I think we need to get a number one receiver. I think we need to get a number one receiver in the draft. And like, you know, T. Higgins went by, you know, they, of course they drafted Duvernay and, and, and Prochet, who I like, who I, I like a lot. And actually, I think they're actually perfect uh kind of cogs in the wheel almost. And I think Hollywood's an absolute stud. I think Hollywood is like a hidden gem. Uh Ho- Hollywood does exactly what he needs to do. And, you know, he's he's one of the fastest receivers in the NFL. He catches everything you throw at him. And he's just like he's just like the perfect receiver for our offense. You know, you gotta respect the run, but you gotta respect Hollywood Brown too. And I and I think that that's a huge deal. You know, having Hollywood Brown out there, I'm loving everybody else. Willie Sneed, sure-handed. Mark Andrews is top five in the league in tight ends. Nick Bull comes in and catches the football when he needs to. Um, you know, Miles Boykin has improved a bunch to me. Miles Boykin has definitely improved, uh, and, and I can't forget on the defensive side too. Patrick Queen, he's been playing like a cra- like a crazy man too. Uh, I I don't think last last point for, for my Ravens. I don't think the pass rush is as bad as it looks. I think. They can't tackle. That's what I saw. That's what I saw <laughs> last week with uh, Deshaun. Deshaun literally stiff armed somebody, and I'm like, "Oh my goodness!" I was like, "Um, sir, are you good?" Like, sir. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, Caden," because like, like they were getting to him, and you know, I think the Chiefs is a better indication of how good the pass rush is because. The Texans' offensive line is absolutely awful, and they have been for years. So I don't think that's the greatest uh, indication. But, I mean, they got after Baker, too, I, I felt like. Um, I just feel like that they, they just can't tackle right now, and I think that kind of what's hurting them. But, you know, nonetheless, um, week two, I mean, any surprises besides the Falcons blowing another lead? Uh, <laughs> that onside kick, let me tell you something. That that was that was like a a golfer 
cinching in on a putt saying like, I really only have to hit this like 10 feet and the rest is going to take care of itself. That's what the Falcons were doing where they just stared at it and they didn't want to fall on it as if the ball had COVID. It was, it drove, <laughs> it drove me nuts. I'm like, like, like I'm not, my disdain for Dallas has lessened a little bit, whatever. Cause I actually, I, I kind of like Dak. Uh, as a dude and a, and as a quarterback, I don't think he's, I don't, you know, he, I don't think he's like that top echelon, especially the money he's trying to get. But like, I, I do, I do like him as a dude. I do like him as a QB, whatever though. But like, I was really pulling for Atlanta that game because I've, I've always been a Matt Ryan fan. And I, and but like, they, they, they actually have good offensive weapons, and they actually do have some type of good, and they were lighting them up that game and they just let it let it slip away for no reason yeah yeah i mean i i, I could yeah I, I don't i don't know how to feel you know about that jt you got a point i i i, I hear you i hear you through the mute at this point. <laughs> <laughs> no i i was scrolling through facebook the other day and there was a meme that was like uh, <laughs> the Falcons blew a twenty-point lead. At least something normal <laughs> in twenty twenty. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, no, I mean, I don't know. I mean, the other surprise for me is the Jaguars staying in these games. I mean, Gardner Minshew. I think Gardner Minshew is like, I, I, like I got a job to win here. Okay, guys, like we're not taking for Trevor this year. No, like. I mean, and, and it's weird because I felt like Gardner Minshew played well enough last year to earn the spot he, that he did eventually earn this year. But, like, I didn't ex- I, I didn't feel like he should have been benched last year. I thought he played well enough to not be benched for Nick Foles again. Um, you know, I felt like he had really just beat out Nick Foles in that, in that regard, like, as a quarterback. But, I mean, they look good. I wish they would have won that game, to be honest. Because, uh, I mean, and maybe it's just a sour taste from last year's playoff loss, but I'm tired of the Titans at this point. I really am. Um, I, I just I, – I want the, I want something. I want the Colts to win the division or I want the Jaguars to, like, surprise me, okay? Like, the Titans just – I don't know. They just feel like they just sneak through every time. Like, they just sneak through and somehow win these games. But they try not to. They try not to win these games. They make – they feel like the Bengals to me. They try not to win these games, but darn if they don't. I mean, as as much of a Colt fan as I am, if somehow the Jaguars pulled it out, I would be so happy. Like, <laughs> there, there's there's some teams that, like, have been so bad for so long. If they finally got a winning season and, like, made it even to, like, the playoffs, not, not necessarily the Super Bowl, but, like, the the playoffs or like you know a conference game, I would be so happy. No, they were the AFC Championship game a few years ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. should have won. Um, yep. Yeah, I th- yeah, they, they definitely should have. Uh, the Rams, I feel like the Rams are back. Like the Rams, like they took a year off or, or something. They were tired last year or something. They were fatigued. I don't know, but. Like, Jared Goff looks like the guy that they paid. Uh, Jared Goff looks like the guy that I keep harping about that I really like. And then last year, I'm like, um, Jared, what you doing? Like, what you doing, bro? Like, no, this, you got to be better than this if I'm going to hype you up like this. Come on. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so, I mean, he looks better. Um, you know, of course, the NFC East, we talked about it before, is just up in the air. We don't know what's going to happen with that division. We, I mean, you could flip a coin. Uh, can we have a four-sided coin and just, uh, you know, four-sided die or something and just, like, just go? There, there is something wrong with Wentz mentally. He has not been the same since coming back from that ACL, in, which I never, I never thought that Philly should have got rid of of uh, Foles. Yeah, I, I don't know. You know, for, for me, I'm not a big Foles guy. I, 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 I mean. Foles under the Eagles umbrella is okay, but like Foles under any other circumstances, I don't know what it is about the Eagles that he just loves, but he and he thrives under. But he plays decently at least for the Eagles. But then he goes elsewhere, and it's just like injury. Who is this? Kevin Cobb? 
I mean, who are we looking at? Kevin Cobb at this point? Like, what? Like, what is going on? Like, I, I don't understand it. But yeah, I think, I think Wentz is. I mean, I think Wentz is far more talented than Nick Foles is. I think he's a way better quarterback than Nick Foles is. But like you said, I, and that's a good point. I think he's in his head in some way. He's got to be. He's got to be in his head in some way because because he's great and he plays well at times. But then there's other times where he's just like, oh, let me throw up this duck for you. And I'm like, this is not the Carson Wentz that like was going to win MVP before he got hurt. Like, this is not this is not the guy. Like, who is this guy? What's going on with my guy? You know, so I don't know what I don't know what's up with him. I, I really don't. Um, the Jets are still the Jets. Uh, um, <laughs> um, the Bills look pretty good. Uh, you know, I, I, the Bills look pretty good. I, I, I'm also liking what Cam is doing with the Patriots. He's looking like he's going to have a resurgent type of a year. I've always loved Cam, um, and I'm glad that he that it looks like he's going to have a really good year. Uh, you know, under this Bill Belichick umbrella, and I think it. Uh, you know. Him, him signing with Bill Belichick is like having a really good mentor, right? Like, well, there's so much unrest and so much, like, just ridiculousness going on in Carolina for him and with the media and with, all you know, him losing and all of this. And I think he just needed somebody to just say, Cam, relax. You're a freaking freak of nature, son. Go out there and play. Like, I think that's all he needed. He just needed somebody to – I think he needed somebody to actually trust in him because a quarterback psyche is hard to get back up. That's why that that's why when for example, like we talked about before, when the Browns give up on a quarterback, it's hard for for the quarterback to be like, you know what? I can be great again. I can do it. If nobody believes in you, it's hard to, to step it back up again like you want to. Like Casey, cool. I, I see you. And I and I think like you know talking about Cam Newton and, and you know other players too. I think sometimes you just need that change of scenery. You know, you, you sometimes you need to you know either be traded or you know go to another team. Um, not everybody can be Tom Brady uh, with the Patriots for however many years he was there. Not everybody can be you know, uh, Peyton Manning with the Colts. Sometimes you need, you know, all right, I've been here for a while. It's, you know, I'm starting to, you know, it's getting stagnant. I need to go somewhere else and kind of, you know, get a refresher. Um, and, and I think a lot of guys need that just in general to kind of, you know, I either get new coaching who, you know, feels like they believe in you more or just, you know, uh, a different um, fan base, something. Uh, I, I think everyone at, at some point just needs that little bit of a change. And I think that could have been, you know, something good for Cam to kind of go to uh, the Patriots and, you know, have that, you know, coach that's going to believe in you and that's going to, you know, knows your potential and is going to push you to your potential. Exactly. And, and my last thing to talk about from, from week two before we, uh, get into uh, of course week three is are you trying to tell me the only thing the Cardinals needed was another number one receiver? Like like that was all that was all that was like that was it. So Kyler was Kyler's like that, huh? Like like Kyler's really like that? Okay. I mean I, I, I like Kyler a lot. Um everybody overlooks him because he's short too and you know coming from the short family. Uh you know I, I, I like to um you know, cheer for my, my, my short quarterbacks, Russell Wilson, uh, <laughs> uh, Kyler Murray, of course. So, you know, I, I try to uh, cheer for my short quarterbacks too. Uh, but, I mean, you try to tell me you add DeAndre Hopkins and, and you know, everything's all right with uh, <laughs> with them. Just imagine, like, I, and I know they like Kenyon Drake, but just imagine if they had somebody else. Like, just imagine if they really had somebody that, like, really knocked your socks off at, you know, running the football. Like, I mean, they'd be ridiculous. I mean, they look pretty darn good so far. I mean, albeit they did play Washington, I, I understand. But uh, Casey, they did play Washington, um, who looked like Washington again. Uh, this <laughs> the defense is pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Washington, defense is keeping them in the game for as long as they can. They're hanging on. For as long their, as they can. Their, their, their front is, is pretty good. And they just drafted. Yeah, they, I, I agree with that. Um, 
That must be uh, Dan Schneider calling uh, Casey to make sure that uh, he doesn't say anything too crazy about the Washington football team. We're we're going we're gonna to bring back Jay Gruden. We're going we're gonna to bring back the, 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 the Gruden that nobody cares about. <laughs> I, I tell you what, man, I do like that Dwayne Haskins now. <laughs> Yeah, this man's out here starting Colt McCoy over Dwayne Hat. Come on, come on. And I like Colt McCoy. That's the issue. I like Colt McCoy, but come on. Come on. <laughs> I loved Colt when he was with Cleveland. James Harrison took off his, his head off his shoulders, but that's another it's another story. Yeah, that definitely is. Um, let's jump into week three. Thursday night football, Dolphins and Jaguars. Interesting game. Um, will the Finns get the wind, as we oftentimes say around here? Um, my dad, who is a Finns fan, says, not with Ryan Fitzpatrick at quarterback. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's waiting for Tua Mania. He is. He, he, he's like, come on, Tua, please. We need you. Um, but uh, Dolphins, Jaguars, for me, I got to go with the Jaguars. I think the Jaguars are just playing too well right now. Like, they may they may only be 500, but they're just playing too well. They're they're playing too hard right now. And the la- every other time I've seen them on Thursday night football, they look pretty darn good. They always shock me on Thursday for some reason. So I, I got I gotta go with the Jaguars. I want the fans to get the win, but I gotta go with the Jaguars. Just um, I mean, okay, this is a hard game for me here. Wow, starting off hard. You know, last week. You know, I had some faith in the Dolphins. You know, I wanted to see them beat the Bills. They, I mean, it was I mean, it was a crazy game. I was watching that game. You know, they had that power go out for a while. They had that delay. I mean, I thought the Dolphins had a chance. But, I mean, they're this still too young of a team right now. And with Ryan Fitzpatrick playing, you know, he's careless with the ball. Like, I mean, he, he's really he's too risky sometimes. And he throws a lot of interceptions. He's a gunslinger with not enough positive plays, though. Yeah. I mean, I like uh, – who's their new running back? Um, it starts with the G. I can't ever pronounce – Gaskin. I like what he's – he's been – he's been running the ball pretty good for them oh, with these past few weeks. But I think – you know, I'm going to give the Dolphins a win here. I'm going to give them a win on Thursday Night Football. The so fans get the wins. Win on this short week. Let's kick it to Adam here. Yeah, I, I I was kind of skimming through the, the games with that being the, the Thursday night game. Like, I, I was kind of struggling with that, too. To me, these teams are exactly the same yeah. in, in terms of, like, where they at currently. Like, I, I do – I think uh, Flores, I think he's he's the, the perfect foil – to set up their culture for the next few, you know, the next couple of years, you know, you know, pending when Tua starts playing, you know, he lives up to uh, his draft status. But, um, and, and I mean, yeah, they don't, they don't have to, they don't have to rush to get Tua in, you know, right away. I granted, I think that you'll see him sooner rather than later, but, and again, Fitzpatrick is, again, he is tank proof. He, like, like, he, like his, he'll, even when he was with the Bucks, like you're thinking, like you know, journeyman, this, that, and the other. But he'll squeak out a few wins here and there, and and look like a top fifteen quarterback. But then he comes back to Fitz Tragic Land the very next week. But it, <laughs> in 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 this in this regards, I think this is going to be a sloppy game, but like in a fun way, where because again, like Minshew Mania, or there's I've heard him called Uncle Rico. Um, you know, like he's actually, he's bringing, he's bringing a lot of eyes to Jacksonville and it's not even just AEW, but it, 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 I think this, this will be a fun game. Again, I'm like a 22, 19 type thing, but I'm going to, I'm going to go with the, uh, I'm going to go with the Finns as well. All right. Casey, Finns get the win. I mean, you know, I did I did coin the phrase the Finns get the wins on the show. I did. I did do that. And uh, again, if anyone from the NFL or the uh, Dolphins organization sees this 
Uh, you can use that. I just ask for some of the royalties. Um, <laughs> I, I do think this is going to be, I, I feel like it's going to be a close game. Um, I don't think it was going to be anything like a blowout or anything. I do think it's going to be close. I'm going to say the Finns get the win, but with the way the Jags have been playing, I'm going to put them on upset alert just in case. All right. Texans versus the Steelers. Uh, for me, I want this to go the Texans way because uh, I hate the Steelers with, with a lot of fibers of my <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and they're fame. They're fame to them. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, I just wonder how the Texans are going to hold up, especially that that offensive line with the the amount of pressure that Pittsburgh can bring in. Curious about that. That uh, makes me think a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go with the Steelers, but I am going to put them on upset alert to lose uh, at home. Uh, I think the Texans can do it. I still think the Texans got to go pick up number one receiver. There's got to be somebody on that team that makes you feel like, you know what, I got to key in on this guy. Because I don't think there, there's nobody there. Like, Brandon Cooks made some pretty good plays last week. Will Fuller makes some good plays at times. But there's nobody that's like every single down. You're like, I got to put my best guy on this guy. And, like, I think they're learning that. Bill O'Brien, that terrible <sighs> that made. Um, I don't know who's worse, Bill O'Brien or Elton Brand. Anyway, um, it, it's it's Bill. Oh, is it Bill? I, maybe maybe it's just the the homer in me uh, for how bad my Sixers look right now. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but um, I yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna go with the Steelers, but I'm gonna put them on upset alert. I think the Texans could definitely win. Just um, this is gonna be an easy pick for me. I got the Steelers winning here. I mean. The Texans, I mean, they don't really have a number one receiver right now. I mean, I mean, yeah, Will, Will Foley is all right, but I, I, can, I can't really think of any, any like, star wide receiver, like, where the um, Steelers need to double team them or, you know, go like, oh, yeah, we need a double. We need to get on this guy. I can't really think of um, anybody on the Texans. And Deshaun Watson, he's just going to take a lot. Of, I'm like, with that Steelers defense, he's going to take some hits back there, and it's it's going to be rough. And so I'm going to go with the Steelers to win here. I mean, Bill O'Brien's a joke, but at least they did uh, they did make some adjustments with the way that they played the Ravens. They, they, they did a good job, especially early in the game, trying to get some quick passes, getting the ball to Brandon Cooks and letting him be fast you know, getting the ball to Will Fuller in space and, and guys like that. So that did help. So maybe that, that that's the one thing I can think of that may actually help the Texans this week uh, is having some sort of an ability to adjust. Just please fire Bill O'Brien from the NGO. Chase. Uh, I feel like even if the Texans were looking better, I, I would still pick the Steelers just because – uh, of our divisional rivalry and all the times that they beat us in divisional games. Um, so, yeah, I'm going with Steelers. All right, so Adam. Yeah, this one, th this is – I I believe this is going to be an unfortunate uh, season for the Texans. But, like, like Casey, in, in your regards, like, and I know it would – it's 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 gonna pain me to to pick the squealers, but like in, in this regard, Texans lose this whatever though. To me, that that shuts them out in in that division. I mean, like before before the season, it was kind of up in the air between uh, you know uh, them and the Colts, you know. But like like to me, right now, this would be the the Colts's division. Uh, like, well, you know, you still have to mess with Tennessee, whatever though. But the you know the Colts are still still good enough to hang in there with uh with Tennessee in that regard. Um but in terms of the game if the Texans were at home I may give it a slight edge uh or not I shouldn't say slight edge but a a a a fighting chance in this regards whatever though but 
even with no fans, again, there is something about Heinz Field that is it has this aura about it. You know, it, you know, there, I know they're going to be jamming renegades at you know at at, at at the at the drop of a hat, um, yeah, in, in certain in certain uh, situations. But like you know, yeah, in this, I got I got the Steelers huge uh, in this one. It just yeah, Texans. Even outside of you know Fuller, you know you know Cooks is, a, is an okay addition, but the we had mentioned Fuller. Fuller thrived when Hopkins was there. Like now, the, both those guys, even together on the field, don't wouldn't scare me as a as a uh, defensive coordinator. And you know they got no running game. Darren Fells, who I miss, who used to play for the Browns, is a okay player, but they just they've got no firepower. Defense is, you know, is okay. You know, uh, DJ, you just mentioned, you know, Texans were actually getting to Lamar pretty well. But, yeah, in, in this regards, I think you know, Ben is, is just going to nickel and dime him, and that defense is just way too good. So, yeah, I got the Steelers big here. Yeah, I, I do like David Johnson. I, I just think they need to get him involved as more of a receiver. I think he's yes. really dangerous as a receiver uh, than he is kind of running between the tackles. I mean, because he did have a, a good season. Yeah, I think he had two solid seasons before he kind of had some injury issues to them. But, um, Washington football team, Browns. Hmm. This one's kind of tough because, I, I, you know, on paper, the Browns should definitely win this, and they're at home. Uh, but I don't know. If, if the Washington football team that showed up in the second half of the Eagles game shows up, you know, I might have to change my mind. And plus, they got a, a pretty good defense. I, I think their defense is good enough to keep them in the game. Can they force Baker to, to make some quick decisions, uh, especially with that pass rush? Their pass rush is lethal. Uh, you know, Montez Sweat, Ryan Kerrigan, uh, Chase Young, and those boys, like, you know, that, that that's a pretty lethal pass rush. Uh, you know, they're a little suspect, you know, in the secondary. Uh, so, so, I mean, all that pass rush greatness for <laughs> A little, a little in, in the second day. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Browns. I think I think this can go either way. To be honest, I really do. I think it can go either way because I think Washington does have a lot to play for because their division is so up in the air. Like if you can get to seven and nine, if you can get to eight and eight, you know, and squeak some wins by, then you know you'll probably be okay. Uh, and and that that's kind of I think what. Washington and the Giants need to look at, you know, Dallas, I mean, they find ways to lose games. The Eagles, they find ways to lose games. So if you can just find some way to win some of these games that you normally may not win, you know, you might have a pretty decent chance. But I think that offense has got to get going too. I mean, we know Terry's going to get hit. We know, I mean, Terry's going to get hit every week. I mean, he can't. Dude's a freaking monster. He's going to get his every week. But hopefully that opens up everybody else. I don't know any of the other receivers on Washington's team. So, like, introduce me to them uh, by letting Terry get his and then these other guys get his own So, I mean, I'm going to go with the Browns, but I think it could go either way. Uh, we'll, we'll keep Adam for, for, for last because um, I'm sure, uh, you know, he, I'm sure he's got a lot to say on, 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 on this particular one. Uh, Justin. Hmm. This is their hard one. Like a lot of these games this week can go either way. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna go with the Browns here. I don't know. I don't know really what don't know really I don't really know why I'm gonna go with the Browns here. I, I don't know. I just don't know much about this Washington football team. You know they play football though. I mean I know they play football and I know they're from Washington. So that's one thing. So there, that's a couple things I know about this team. But but did you know that they're the Washington football team? Yes, yeah, so that's three things actually. The only one. The only one. The only one. Like why can't we can like Casey said? Why can't we combine teams? <laughs> the Giants. Like well, why can't we? Why can't exactly? We why can we not get the Giant Bears? <laughs> the Giant that. Bears. Come on, we need that. The Giant Man Bear Pigs. Yeah, that. Yes. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is my new team that I've just. No. 
<laughs> Guys, I'm super serious. <laughs> it's the giant man bear pigs. They're real. Um, well, well, now I want the giant man bear pigs to win, but they're not playing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can I write into the NFL and request teams? Because that's that. <laughs> um, see, normally, as as much as I want to go for both teams, because I really like the Browns, and I really like. The Washington football team. 90% because they're called the Washington football team now. And I think that's fantastic. And I never want them to change that. Um, But I got to go with the Browns because I think, I think Washington could, with the division that they're in, they could, you know, take a loss here and still be okay, depending on how the Eagles are. Um, because again, you know, we, they have the Giants, but like, what are the Giants going to do, honestly? And the Cowboys, just, they don't, they make it close to playoffs and they do what the Cowboys always do. So, <laughs> you know, I, they, they'll still have a chance. I think Washington will still have a chance. So I'm going to go with the Browns. You know, how about, how about we don't? How about we just have a tie this game? <laughs> just have them both tie. Uh, I, uh, I never, I never thought I would live through a, a game where the Browns tied, but I had to see it a couple of years ago, the very first game against the Steelers. <laughs> screw, screw you, Zane Gonzalez. <laughs> oh man. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, you know, I'm going with here. Now, DJ, you, you did say you did say like their their defense, it, their front is very good. It's it's very 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 good. Uh, and like I I thought that was one of the sneaky steals of the draft when they got swept uh, in that draft. Whatever I think I think he's he's a really good player, but they just they just do not have anything outside of McLaurin and one of their starters. I think he would just got put on IR. Um, Brandon something, I think, but, but it just, but again, like after McLaurin, like I couldn't tell you, I couldn't tell you who their tight ends were. I don't know what their running game looks like. Cause I don't think they have, they don't have AP anymore. I believe, I mm-hmm. think he, he got shipped out, but, um, but yeah, it, it just, in, in this game, you, you cannot, you cannot let that, that front uh, dictate the pace. I mean, like with, with, with Chubb, and hunt in the backfield, whatever they, they they get them going, especially just one of them. You get them going, you're going to change the pace. Get Baker, do those, have him go in those play action boots. Get him in space. I think this is going to be a big game for the Browns tight ends, Austin Hooper, Harrison Bryant. I think they'll be able to really crack down on on that linebacking core. Uh, and I think, and I, and I think this will be the game where Jarvis Landry starts to get his catches, uh, and and hopefully, you know, Odell has those, you know, one or two, one or two plays where Baker rolls out and hits him deep, uh, and, and their 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 front seven, I I think they can they can get to Dwayne. Like Browns are graded really high in uh, QB pressures uh, so far this year, and they're getting a lot of their their players back Mac Wilson, Kevin Johnson and uh, greedy Williams. But in the secondary, Terrence Mitchell played really well against the, uh, against the Bengals. Yes. I'll be at the Bengals, whatever though, but he is, he he's been one of the last remaining guys from the uh, off season in 2018 and has just been nothing but a professional and a solid number two guy to fill in. But um, I think this will be, not a blowout, but I think it'll be a convincing win uh, for Cleveland. And the fact that they're playing at home and they're one of the uh, few stadiums that have actually allowed have allowed to have fans in the stadium. And I watched that game on Thursday, and it was six thousand, and it sounded like sixty thousand. Yeah, so obviously Browns for me here. And and I think too, uh, real quick on the Browns, I feel like Kareem Hunt. Is- Looking a lot like uh, 
Kansas City Kareem Hunt right now. Like he looked ridiculous last week. Like I was like, I was like, how the heck you got Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt on the same freaking team? He had twenty plays total in that game, and three quarters of his production came in that fourth quarter. Eighty yards and two TDs. Yeah, he he lo- he looked really good. I, I, I he, he I mean if uh <laughs> if, if the Chiefs didn't have Todd Edwards to lay, I'm sure just was probably like you know uh Green Hunt is kind of good. Uh, you know maybe we shouldn't have. Uh, <laughs> but but I mean, <laughs> I mean Cream Hunt, yeah, he is good. They got yeah. the rookie, rookie stud right now, so um, yeah. Or at least so we so we think so far. I would like to point out that if you if with with Washington's new new moniker, Washington football team, you know, they're 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 one switcheroo away on their on their team name to be called WTF. <laughs> That's exactly true. You can be more right. <laughs> uh, moving into the uh, Bengals versus the Eagles. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Eagles. I think the Eagles might finally get a pretty convincing win. I, I like Joe Joe Burrow, but like I don't know. A lot of people are like, this dude's throwing the ball sixty times and looking really good. Like if you're throwing the ball sixty times, like I don't know if he can look good throwing the ball for sixty times. I really don't <laughs> I don't think that that's a true possibility. For for whatever reason, why are you a rookie throwing the football sixty times in the first place if you got Joe Mixon in the backfield and Joe Gio Bernard? Like you got two at least decent running backs. Why the heck aren't you using them? Uh, you know, I mean, I know AJ Green's back, and they're, they're, I guess they're trying to make up for the couple of years they lost him. They're trying to make up and, and, and maybe give him a couple more receptions or something. But gee, uh, you know, I, I think I, I'm excited for Joe Burrow. I hope he does well. I want to see him do well. But like, and I, and I said this before. I said this to somebody, and I don't think I said it on here. But like, Joe Burrow doesn't. He doesn't look as good as Andy Dalton right now to me so far. Like, I think he looks okay. I think he's going to be, but, like, we forget how good Andy Dalton was when he first came into the league. Uh, you know, those first five years of them making the playoffs, they might not even win a game in the playoffs, but Andy Dalton put up some pretty good numbers. He he, he really gave that team some really good hope. So, I not to say that Joe Burrow's not going to be as good as Andy Dalton or anything like that. I'm just saying right now, from the two games we saw of him, he's not, you know, he's not, like, giving me the feel of like what Andy Dalton really felt like when he first came into the league. So like I think, you know, there obviously has to be some improvement you know, improvement being made, albeit um, you know, Andy Dalton had a healthy, healthy AJ Green. <laughs> like he had a really healthy AJ Green, uh, when he came into the league. But uh yeah, I'm going with the Eagles. I I think the Eagles win this game and get in the win column. Because if they lose to the to the Bengals and go to zero and three, ugh, that that that's rough. A, a really rough start for, for the Eagles. I feel like just. I mean, I really want to go with the Bengals here. I really do. And well, for one reason, I got Joe Mixon on my fantasy team, and I need him to go off. Um. Man, you know I'm gonna go have I'm gonna have to go with the Eagles here. They're at home. Um, I feel like the Eagles are just a a better, well-rounded team than the Bengals right now. I mean, I can barely name. I mean, like other than like Joe Mixon and AJ Green, I can barely name any like receivers or running backs like on the team. Like I like not. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to go with the. Eagles here to win, to pick up their first dub of the season. I think Tyler Boyd's good. I just don't know if he's Oh, yeah. Play. Yeah, Tyler Boyd. Yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah. You know, like, you know when mm-hmm. they have big targets beside him, they look really good. Even though I think Juju impressed me last week uh, against the Broncos. But, uh, you know, when, when you know Tyler Boyd beside A.J. Green, Tyler Boyd looks really good. But Tyler Boyd, when he was forced to be alone, it, you know, they really forced him to struggle a little bit. Uh, same thing with Juju. When Juju was left alone, it was kind of like, you know, is this dude really a number one receiver or, or is he? And I think it was the contract year for Juju, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, he's really got a ball out a, a little bit more this year. And I think he was pretty good uh, last year as much as I never want to give the Steelers credit, ever. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Casey. Uh, 
I, I think I think you have to go with the Eagles. Um, that is your favorite team, right? You come from, uh, from at, it's it's not not at all. But you know, we always joke about how the uh, the Bengals try to find a way to lose, and usually they do. Um, I just don't think they're they're not persistent enough. They're not or sorry, consistent enough. They're not, you know, you just can't trust them. You don't know what you're going to get. Um, so I got to go with the Eagles. I, I think they'll pull it out. Um, but I, I'm trying to decide if I want to put them on upset alert. No, no. I don't think the Bengals will pull it out. So I'm going to go with the Eagles. All right, Adam. I'm actually going to go against the grain here, and I'm actually going to pick Cincy. Um, like, like from what I saw from Joe on Thursday, I saw a guy that has a lot, a lot of moxie, a lot of, a lot of heart. You know, the I he really he has captured the uh, the, the the trust of his teammates, which is huge, uh, especially you know with him being a rookie. Uh, but again, I, I saw a lot of good good things from him. He got he got hit a lot in that game, and 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 always you know popped right back up whatever whatever. And I mean, yes, you you never you never want your your especially your rookie quarterback to throw it sixty times. But you know, again, Cleveland was you know at the time late you know midway in the fourth quarter, it was thirty five twenty three. So he had to start cooking, and Cleveland was playing a playing a soft defense, whatever this and that, you know, when that kind of stuff happens, that kind of dictates the flow of the game. Um, but like just Philly is not impressing me. And I, I think that this will be, I mean, it it won't, it wouldn't shock me if Philly won, you know, being at home and this, that, and the other, but I just, I, I like Joe has, you know, he played, he played really good in that second half of, of, of uh, game one. And and I'm and I'm gonna say it since he was robbed week one with that horrible offensive PI call that they called on on AJ. In in that in that predicament that late in the game, you never throw that flag. And you, you always have guys jockeying for the position. But if they had a kicker who apparently, you know, got a little old little crampy cramp in his leg and trying to kick that ball, which is always a perfect perfect out when the game's on the line. Okay. Oh, uh, oh, it's like a Peter Griffin. Ah, ah. Um, but no, but yeah, but no, like, I, I think, I think that the, those guys will rally around Joe. He'll have a good game. And, you know, I think this will be a low scoring game really close, but I'll, I'll go with Cincy on this one. All right. And then we got the Niners versus the Giants. The Giants to me are such a hard read sometimes. Like, simply because, yes, they lose a lot, but they feel like they're always in the game for some reason. They're always like right there. Um, even last week, no Saquon, and they're still playing well enough to, to potentially win the game against a really good defense in Chicago. Um, I, I freaking love Danny Dimes. I like, I, I think he was unfairly booed uh, for for Dave Gettleman taking a chance on him and, and you know maybe reaching for him a little bit, uh, but you know you know what happened to the last uh, person that New York drafted that got booed, Chris Dasquez, and he was pretty doggone good for New York, of course. Um, so I'm gonna go with the Giants, you know, to win and beat the 49ers in this game. And that's kind of like, whoa, like, are you kidding me? Like, you're really going to pick the Giants over the 49ers? But I think losing Nick Bosa, I think it's going to ruin their pass rush. Nick Bosa is absolutely like that. Um, Nick Bosa is a guy you really feel like you have to double team. And I think losing Nick Bosa, I think it's going to ruin their pass rush. I think it's going to really hurt their pass rush. How healthy is Jimmy G this week? That's another thing we got to worry about. Of course, Solomon Thomas, too. Like where you know is, is he good? Is he, is he is, you know is he coming back? We just know Nick Bosa is done. So I think not having Nick Bosa, I think Nick Bosa is like he's what makes the wheel turn uh, for the 49ers. So I, I think that could really hurt them 
uh, this year. I, I think their defense is still going to be good. Um, I don't think one player necessarily defines your defense, but at the same time, you know, if you take J.J. Watt off of the Texans' defensive line, how good are they? How good is that defense without J.J. Watt? So I, I'm going with the, with the Giants on the upset. Just You know what, DJ? I couldn't agree with you anymore there. I'm putting the Giants on upseller this week. They're on the yeah, they're on the upseller. Like with all the injuries that the 49ers had this week, with Garoppolo going down, with um Bosa going down. Uh who's that he's a running back. Um oh man, I can't ever I can't pronounce his name. What? Raheem Mostert. Raheem Mostert, yeah, he's on my fantasy team, which he went off last week until he got injured, of course. Uh, he went off for me. Um, he's not going to be playing. And, you know, this this 49ers team, I, I just feel bad, you know. Like, with this year, you know, with not having much, you know, um, preseason and stuff, and, you know, this, this injuries are bad this season. I mean, early on, like, with all these – leg injuries and stuff it just makes my leg just kind of cramp up and like oh man not like it just makes feels like i hurt my leg it's terrible but um you know casey and i talked about this what's that i I was saying sorry so i didn't mean to interrupt it 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 glitched out and i didn't want I, i didn't want nothing to be said but uh I was just saying that that Casey and I uh, were talking about it last week, how, like, you know, this corona season really could be, like, an injury-plague season just because, like I said, there was no preseason. You know, it almost Mm -hmm. felt like that in in a way. I totally agree with that. Like, the way with the season, I was really surprised they didn't do any preseason games at all. uh, Mm -hmm. These guys kind of get them back into a little bit of a, a of a shape to be ready to to play this crazy game. Yeah, but I, I got the Giants here, and they, they're at home. I think they're at home this week. Yeah, they're at home this week. So, and even with with them losing Saquon, you know, they I still think you know they're in the games and stuff. Like last week, like like you said, DJ, they were still pretty well in the game. I mean, yes, against a pretty mediocre Bears team. The Bears. <laughs> you know, pretty against a pretty mediocre Bears team. But they were still in the game though, nonetheless. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I think yeah. and I think too it gives Danny Jones an opportunity to like maybe even grow up in front of her eyes a little bit. Like mm-hmm. he doesn't have that security blanket of, of Saquon. And I mean Albeit, he's a good part of his career not playing with Saquon because Saquon was hurt a little bit last year too. So like, he's really gonna have to like learn. Okay, like I gotta take care of the football. You know, I gotta make the right read. Like I can't just maybe check it down to Saquon. I know they signed Devontae Freeman, so that probably will help. Uh, you know, he's gonna really have to, you know, find himself a little bit. And I like I, I like Daniel Jones a lot. You know, and I, I'm hoping. You know that that he's going to be successful, especially the way uh, the city of New York treated him. Uh, Casey, uh, you know, if if it wasn't for all the injuries and all that, I I would probably go with the 49ers just because I I feel like I can never trust the Giants. Um, you know, like you said, they, they, they always seem to be in the game, but they don't always get the win, uh, which at the end of the day is, is you know, the whole point. But with all the injuries, I, 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 feel, I feel confident that uh, the, the Giants can pull this one out. Um, I don't think it's going to be anything, like, mind-blowing. I don't think it's going to be – I don't think it's going to be the game that, you know, we talk about next week. Uh, but I, I think I think they'll get the win here. Adam. 
So yeah, again, uh, another one I think I'm I'm gonna go against the grain too. Like I, I'm gonna go with the Niners just because I mean it's it, it's it, it's a big loss losing uh, Solomon and, and Bosa. That I mean that's I mean again that that's the heartbeat of your defense right there. Whatever the but I just think but I, I still think that they're they're deep in that regard. Like like you, you can't replace. We can't replace guys like that, you know, and you know, in the drop of a hat, in you know, in one week's time, whatever. Though, but I think they have, they have good enough coaching uh, in that regards to, uh, to you know, hold their own. Like, I'm still kind of the jury's still kind of up for me with with uh, Danny Dimes, and like, and I I know he's probably kind of a little bit of a, you know, he he, he is one, that, he is kind of a underdog to root for because yes. It my it, in my opinion, yes, it was a you know a little bit of a reach. Like I I thought that's where Dwayne Haskins was going to go, uh, in in that draft, whatever. But he was obviously that that he got picked later. But uh, but anyway, um, and the like I don't know how how much you you guys fall into that that theory of the of a West Coast team traveling to the East Coast uh, in this regards. Particularly in in this climate, with traveling during the COVID era, so like and again, and I don't I don't mm-hmm. think I don't think the Niners have had to uh, travel that far yet. So you know, so far uh, this season, but um, you know, th- this could be. I, I think this this will be closer than some people think. Whatever though, but I'd say the Niners uh, etch it out in this game. Raiders versus the Patriots. Casey, I would like to issue a formal apology. Um, I'm, I'm right here on the show. Uh, I said that the Raider race was a little bit stale, a little bit sour. Hey, Casey, I was wrong. Okay? The Raiders is like that right now. They are like that. I need to say it. I am impressed by the freaking Raiders right now. I told you, we got a good batch of Raiderade this year. You know, the 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 past couple of years, just the recipe was off. It was a little bit off, uh, but we got the good recipe, and I think I think they got it this year. I think they got it, and y- you know what? I don't think anyone has ever said this in the history of football ever. But I'm gonna say that the Raiders, they they might they might take this. They might beat the Patriots. I I think it's a possibility. I do. I don't think anyone has ever said that ever in in any situation at all. Not even on Madden, on rookie. I don't think anyone has ever said that the Raiders would beat the Patriots. But I'm gonna say it. They're gonna beat the Patriots. I think the on time, rookie. <laughs> the only time that they said the Raiders would beat the Patriots was uh, the Tuck Rule game. I think they were <laughs> favored in that game. I'm pretty sure. I think they were favored in that game. <laughs> <laughs> this is for time. This is for the time we know turned into the time we knew. Like this is this is the four. Um. Yeah. I mean, you're going with the Raiders. I'm still going to go with the Patriots. Like, I I trust the Raiders a little, a little bit more now, but I, I, I'm i still not quite there. Like, they look good against the Saints. But, I mean, I don't trust the Saints' defense as far as I can throw them. And, and they got some heavy players on that team. Uh, so, I mean, I don't really – I mean, they have, like, talented pieces here and there, but I almost wonder how they mesh together. Do they mesh very well? Uh, so, I'm going to go with the Patriots. Uh, I, I, th- I think it's Cam's time, and, and, and I got to go with the Patriots. So, uh, maybe next week. Maybe, maybe when they face them Chiefs, I'm telling you, I'm going to pick them. I'm going to pick them <laughs> when they face them Chiefs. <laughs> All right, Justin, go ahead and pick the Patriots, because we know you got to pick outside of your division, around your division. And then around my division back in. See, <laughs> I mean, that rate rate. It, it's going to be spoiled this week. It's it's going to be past the due date this week. 
it, it's just gonna be really bad. It doesn't I'm, have an expiration date, sir. Oh, it it, it does. It, my, the the Brady Raid I know has an expiration date. And me being a residence Chiefs fan, you know, I always love to see the Raiders lose. Like one of our, this is one of our biggest rivals. So I always love to see them lose. But I got to say, these past two weeks, watch them play. It looks like a whole different Raiders team. Like, is it their move to Las Vegas that's making it different? Like, what? That's what it is. Like, that's what it is. Casey don't like it, but it's the move. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I they were playing at a baseball stadium, and they're like, you know what? Why, why are we playing at a baseball stadium? We can't win at a baseball stadium. We gotta get to a football stadium. It's like we play, we play, we play the wrong sport, guys. We, we play the wrong, we play the wrong sport. Nah, but the, the Patriots are gonna win. The Patriots are gonna win here. I, yeah, they're winning. It's Cam Newton time. Hold hold on, hold on, hold on. It's just like you know the Cardinals. They grow the grass outside and they <laughs> roll it in. Roll the, yeah. the Raiders they play on a baseball field because they don't conform to your norms. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next time uh, they're gonna play on a hockey rink, and then you're gonna <laughs> see. <laughs> I love to see that. <laughs> Casey, <laughs> I tell you what, man. Any time, any time that I can pull out a catcher from the dugout in this game, man. If my running back can't do it, I'm going to put somebody in a catcher's with a catcher's mitt and a catcher's mask, and I'm going to put him out at fullback, man. <laughs> I just, oh god, that. Oh, Casey, that was beautiful. Um, this this one, this one's tough because I, I I I thought the Saints for sure were gonna were gonna squeak that game out on Monday, and they they just look like absolute you know ass uh, against the Raiders, and the, the yeah, Raiders just it, it's it's one thing. It's one thing to lose, you know, and the Saints defense is pretty good and they gave up 30. And like I I did not see that coming, whatever though. But you know, with this momentum, God. My my gut, I I really want to go with the Raiders on, on, on this one. But I mean, the way Bill and Josh McDaniels is they've kind of brought out They've brought in uh, 2015 Cam out right now. Now, I, I don't think it's uh, – I think they do eventually need to kind of pull it back just a little bit, whatever, though, because, I mean, they – I mean, yeah, they they got Cam for eight bucks basically this season. So, you know, I don't – you know, and if they're – if they're going to make any type of a run, whatever, though, they need Cam healthy. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the Patriots on this one. At home, it's hard. It's hard to pick against them, Tom Brady or not, at Gillette Stadium. Moving into the final one question: uh, The Titans going up against the Vikings. Oh my God, the Vikings are bad. Like, I mean, I thought it was just Green Bay, and then Indy was like, <laughs> "Let me help you out." <laughs> Um. Yeah, the Vikings look bad. I mean, I know Kirk Cousins said some dumb stuff before the season. You like, like that? And it won't even that because I like that part. <laughs> but I mean, I know he said if I die, I die. But I didn't know he meant his team. Like, what the heck is going on with this team? They lost. I mean, Stephon Diggs was was like crucial to this team. I feel like. I mean, they got Justin Jefferson. They still got Thielen. They still hooked on the ceiling, but still, like, come on. What is Damn it, you took my line. <laughs> like, what are they? They got Dalvin? Kirk Cousins is still there? I, I, I guess losing Xavier Rhodes put the defense in shambles a little bit. It, it definitely looks like, good lord. <sighs> I can't trust the Vikings right now. 
and I don't trust the Titans either. That's the issue. I don't trust the Titans either. Can I just flip a coin and just go with whatever team? I'm going to go with the Titans. I don't trust the Titans, but they're 2-0, and and the Vikings look horrible. At least the Titans are winning football games. The Vikings look absolutely terrible. And they look like, I mean, they look like they've fallen and can't get up, and they need life alert at this point. Like, <laughs> Titans. I got I to gotta go with the Titans. Just. Yeah, this is an easy one for me here. <laughs> the Titans are going to win. They're, they're just going to win. I mean, at least we know what the Titans have going for them. I mean, we do know what the Vikings have going for them, that they're really mediocre and they're garbage. So. Yeah, the the Titans won here. Easy enough. You guys remember when the the Vikings had a good season? That that one. That miss a miracle. Oh, Chase Keenum! <laughs> Chase Keenum! We was. They were so close, and I was excited. I was. I was excited for the Vikings, and, th- and then they blew it. And they're back to the normal Vikings. Um, But I really – oh, it physically hurts me to have to go with the Titans ever. Uh, I'm going to go with the refs. It's my pick. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you do why don't you do what i do like go inside your division outside your division around the division and nope. back in your division nope going with the refs <laughs> that's my pick because i a disqualification no just the refs the refs are gonna just gonna take the ball and didn't score all the touchdowns because you're what are they gonna you're do going- you're going with Jerome Boger, holding on the offense, hitting <laughs> y'all penalty. <laughs> Can I go with Jerome. Earl Hebner, please? Um, yes. Earl Hebner. Yes. <laughs> Earl Hebner, Lil Nate, <laughs> Charles Robinson. <laughs> Aub- Aubrey Edwards. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess I gotta go with the Titans as much as I really don't want to. Oh, shame, shameful. Come on, Vikings, do better. <laughs> All right, Adam. Uh, yeah, this yeah this one's an easy one. It just the Vikings are are in deep deep trouble. What's that? What's happening? Adam, it's on you. I don't, am I, right, am I, I muted? I think we're back. I think. He already said. Oh, he said here. that. Yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're all here. We're good. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I'm like, I saw you. I saw you giggling. And I'm like, did I? What happened? Anyway. Um. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah, the 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 Vikings are in are in deep deep doo doo in, in this in this regard. They, they I think this is the first time under Mike Zimmer that they're zero and two or whatever though. But yeah, losing Diggs was was major. I mean, like like Cook's good, you know. Thielen is all right and Rudolph's okay, but they again they don't they don't scare you. They don't they don't stretch the field. And and again, Titans aren't. You know they're not a real flashy team, but you know that's kind of how Vrabel coaches, coming from that Belichick, uh, that branch or that umbrella. But uh, but yeah, I I, I think this is, is going to be a low scoring game. But uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go with the Titans. All right, into the next one, which is the Rams and the Bills. This is a good one, uh, very interesting one. Uh, the Bills playing at home here. Rams having to come all the way from LA. I think the Bills get the upset. Just because the Rams got to come all the way from LA. Um, I, I, I mean, because the Bills, I think it looks good. Like, and and, and you got to remember too. And this is one of the situations I was talking about before. Uh, well, last week, 
where the Rams had to go to Philly, and they had to go back to L.A. And then they got to go back, uh, you know, and, and come back and, and go right back to New York. Uh, so right, you know, right back to Buffalo. So you know, that's a lot of travel. That's a lot of fatigue, and that's like the COVID. That, that's like the COVID rules for, for trying to uh, make sure that everybody is safe. So that that's that's interesting. Um, and I think it's going to be tough on the Rams. I, I think the Rams slow down a little bit this week, uh, and I think they're going to lose the Bills. Just yeah, it's easy for me this week. I got the Bills beating the Rams here. I mean, you hit on all the points I was just about to say, so there's not really much else to say about this game. Yeah, I'm going to make it three in a row. Got to go with the Bills. Um, I just – I feel like I can never trust the Rams. Uh, I mean, they're both 2-0, and oh, but, again, this season specifically, uh, that really doesn't mean a lot, you know. Um, so – I'm going to go with the Bills in this one. All right. Four in a row? Yep, four in a row. Bills. Um, Josh Allen is is playing out of his mind uh, right now. And then, yeah, I mean, the fact that you know, the Rams got to make the, the travel, that, you know, that's, that's huge, whatever, though. But, I mean – like I, I think this is going to be a really really fun game. Right? Like you know, hot, maybe not high score, but like you know, in the you know twenty twenties regions, whatever. Like you know, twenty eight twenty four, you know, you know, something like that. Um, Josh Allen's weird because like he, he will make throws that drive me nuts. Of like, I, how does this guy get much praise? But then the very next series, he'll make a throw where I'm like, he's maybe one of two other guys in this league that can make that throw. Uh, he, he's entertaining to watch. You know, they got a they got a good defense. And again, like I said, they're at they're at home. Yep, I'm gonna go with Bills. And he's like the second leading rusher for quarterbacks too. Um, the Bears versus the Falcons. I think the Falcons are terrible after what they did last week. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna go with the Bears. If Mitchell Trubisky can lead the Bears to a three and zero start. Somebody's gotta gotta fess up, okay? Cause, cause they gave Somebody him- call my mama. <laughs> they gave him so much crap, and they're like, "Why are we not starting Nick Foles? If he starts out at three and zero, you're gonna. You, I mean, they're gonna have to put some respect on my man's name. This is my guy right here, Mitch. This is my guy. This this man is out here playing the football right now. Not not as good as the Washington football team. You know, he ain't as obvious as Washington. But still, he out here playing. I'm telling you, this man, if he leads him to 3 and 0, I don't care if it is against the Falcons. I mean, the Falcons are supposed to be kind of decent. I mean, they're supposed to be a little bit decent. Okay. A little bit. Just. Um. Hmm. Yeah, that's an easy one here. I got the, the Bears. I got them win here. I um, mean. Yeah, last week was just blowing that – the Falcons blowing that lead. I mean, going back to that game last week, you know, with the Falcons and the Cowboys with that onside kick, I don't know. understand how they didn't know to just jump on the ball. Like, and uh, – oh, what's that? When you look at it, it did not look like it was going to go 10 yards. It went so – Yeah. Hard. Yeah, I agree. Um, also, you know, being in that situation, you know, it's kind of hard to go like, oh, I but you could jump on the ball no matter what, you know what I mean? So this is just get on the ball, you know what I mean? Have one of them just go get it. That's what I would have done. Um, but like the, um, I think it was an owner who said that, um, he, he, they didn't know the rule that they could jump on the ball and just to get it and like just run the clock out. Then, um, yeah, someone needs to get fired over there in Atlanta because that's just terrible for not knowing those rules. <laughs> like that's just bad. Um, what's that? That's a good old dang thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, but no, I'm gonna go with the. The Bears here, and I, I agree with you, DJ. Like, 
you know, I didn't really expect the Bears to be going possibly going three and zero already. Like what? I didn't expect them to be like this. Like I thought the Vikings would be a lot better than them, but like it's just like like I said, it's just a weird season. This COVID, this COVID season, it's really weird. It, it's weird. Gentlemen, I you know what I think that I think the Falcons are going to surprise us this week, and I think they're going to blow a thirty point lead, <laughs> and the Bears are gonna win. <laughs> Can you make it a clean sweep here? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna make it a clean sweep. Um, like part of me, part of me really, because I, like I partially feel bad for Atlanta, but when you have a a bonehead play like that, yeah, you de- you deserve to lose. But then the fact that Dan Quinn still has a job, you know, astounds me. Um, and and yeah, and just again, d- despite despite the the woes of 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 good old Mitch, he's he, he's. He's he's got them playing tough, and and like the, the, that defense is, is is still nasty with you know with Khalil Mack and and, and such, but um, but yeah, I'll, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Bears as well. All right, into the four o'clock games: Panthers and Chargers. Um, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with the Chargers. I think the Chargers are going to stick with Justin Herbert. And I think he, he looked pretty impressive. I, I like what Justin said earlier. He looked pretty impressive to me, uh, you know, from the little sample size that we have of him so far. You don't have much film on him. Uh, and, I mean, the unfortunate thing for Tyrod Taylor is it seems like he's always just a means to an end. You know, he's always just, like, the guy who's really talented and maybe should be. Exactly, exactly. The guy who's really talented – Maybe should get a couple more starts, but they're just waiting to replace him. I don't know what it is about Tyrod, but like, for some reason, people just want to replace him. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go with the Chargers. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go with the Chargers. The Teddy Bridgewater led uh, Panthers don't look as good right now. I'm, and I think Christian McCaffrey's not gonna be there. I think that's gonna hurt them for a little bit. Uh, but Teddy Bridgewater's gonna have to come out with some magic though, because you know they can't go zero and seven because <laughs> just because uh, Christian McCaffrey's not gonna be in the lineup, so they're they're gonna have to do something, uh, or you know the Bucks or the Saints are gonna run away with this division pretty quickly. Uh, but just hmm, okay. So you know I'm not gonna do what I always do where I pick outside my division go around and all that you know I'm not doing the Justin way quit lying I'm actually I'm actually gonna go with the chargers to actually win go, Chargers! Go! <laughs> I'm actually pick I'm actually picking them to win here because I mean yeah, Panthers. Yeah, they after losing Christian McCaffrey and like, yeah, dude, they're, the Panthers is going kind of, it's going to hurt them a little bit. I mean, yeah, a lot of it actually. Chargers win. Chase. You're not muted. This. You, DJ, you have one job. So just rewind it. You just got to rewind you, it. You have <laughs> one. Yeah, and it's new. But, yeah, yeah, but, but, Casey? D- yes? <laughs> <laughs> you have one job. You're the tech guy. Uh, <laughs> I can't push the button. It's not. Uh, anyway, um, I think Arnold said it best. Go, Chargers, go. I <laughs> I think he needs to call a game. I really do. Uh, I think Arnold Schwarzenegger needs to call one Charger game, and I would be so happy. <laughs> he, 
He's going to the 20, the 10 touchdown. <laughs> and, and you know, as a, as, as a famous uh, LSU coach would say, go Chargers. Uh, you know, it kind of Get to the end zone. <laughs> Adam. Casey, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna need you to record you doing Arnold doing play by play, <laughs> and I need that as my ringtone. <laughs> listen, listen to me, listen to me. They've got to get the ball down the field into the end zone. You've got to get out of here. <laughs> <You're crazy. laughs> you should make a TikTok uh, of that. <laughs> that TikTok, and, and, and that's that is happening, Casey. This this is happening. <laughs> But um, um, believe it or not, if I heard that, I think they are going back to Tyrod this week. If I if I've heard that right, like Anthony, yeah, Anthony, yeah, Anthony Lynn said that Herbert, he is a backup for a reason. Quote, no, and a guy that threw for three hundred yards. And was that close, that close of dethroning the Chiefs. He did not look like a backup. Nah. <laughs> nah. And, that, nah. and that was my thing. And here's the thing. You can you can say that, hey, I'm going to go with Tyrod this week and not just bury the guy that you just drafted. Yeah. Because Herbert looked the part. He did. Now, yeah, he did. He did. even though – They're still one and one. You know, they, yeah. That's what's hard because on one hand – Herbert looked good, but he lost. But Tyrod also led you to a winning week one. So it's like, right, what do? right. And I mean, there was a there was a few coaching decisions from Lynn, and I do like Lynn as a coach. There's a few decisions he made during that game where I was like, eh. you know, for you know, a short fourth down, like I I would have gone for it there and not give the ball back to Mahomes. I mean, that one pass he had on the run, hit a 50 yard bomb to Tyree kill. And I'm like, again, like again, the guy's a human cheat code. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, this one, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go with, I, I'm going to go with the chargers too. I mean, it just, and who, and who knows, maybe Lynn will change his mind in a few days, but like, I heard that today that he's going with Tyra. And again, look, I love Tyrod. He was nothing but a professional when, when he was with Cleveland. I mean, Unfortunately, Tyrod is like the the legit bridge quarterback for each team. He'll last two or three games, and then red carpet for the next guy to come in. But yeah, I'm gonna go with Chargers here. All right, moving into the Jets versus the Colts. I mean, this this, this is pretty simple. Like we probably could do like count it off one, two, three, and all say Colts. Uh, <laughs> they're absolutely terrible. Like I could be uncertain about the Colts, and I would still pick the Colts. Like you could literally put who is the uncertain? About? You could put the Vikings in the game, and I pick the Vikings. Like that's how I feel about the Jets. They're terrible. Um, like and and they don't have Jamal Adams either, so they don't have an anchor on defense. Yeah, right. Um, Colts win. That 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 was pretty easy. Just. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, you're gonna make have a two and zero right here. Colts, Colts win. All right, Adam. The Colts, huge. Casey, I mean, how, how you feel? The only thing I'm upset about is why couldn't we have this game like week? 10 week 12 where when we need like a rest you know cuz th- this is this might be easier than actually just having a bye week um <laughs> I'm sorry to any Jets fans that listen or watch the show but I mean you guys you you trash you just are you you're trash um so yeah Colts <laughs> Cowboys versus the Seahawks. Um, I'm going to go with the Seahawks. I think they're just a far better team. Uh, the Cowboys, 
teams I've talked before. I know they survived last week, but they find ways to lose games. Uh, I mean, I love Dak's resilience, um, and I think he showed it again last week. I think he threw for it was over 400 yards. I think it was like very, very impressive. Uh, and like four TDs or something. Like he was consistent. Uh, and, and I mean, he definitely deserves, you know, some some hate. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with the Seahawks though. Uh, mm-hmm. I think they're just they're just a better team. They're a better defense. Um, the Dallas Cowboys have turned back to the Alex Cowboys uh, with no beat. So I mean, they 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 are. I mean, that defense is awful. They they lost Byron Jones and, and I mean they just fell off. <laughs> like 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 and the crazy part is they got a good D line. The Marcus Lawrence is still good. All the Smith. Still looks good, as crazy as it is, and he ain't played in five years. Like, I mean, I know they lost Leighton Vander Esch, but like the secondary is just suspect, just very suspect. Uh, so Seahawks man, Justin. Um, I'm gonna go have to go with the Seahawks here. I mean, the Cowboys they got lucky last week. They were playing a crappy, uh, they're playing a crappy Falcons team. They're playing a better, a lot better Seahawks team. Which that Sunday night game was really good last week between the Seahawks and the Patriots. That was just a, like every game these past however uh, many years it's been. Um, like these Patriots and Seahawks games have been amazing. And they've been with between seven game, I mean seven games, uh, seven points or less. And last week was like no different, but Seahawks, they're, they're going to win here. They're at home also. Seahawks are winning. All right, Casey. You're not, you're not. But that was I my t- fault. Yeah. If you mute yourself, I can't unmute you. You can't. Let me. Let, let's. We got rewind again. Casey. I, anyway, as much as I don't like the Seahawks for some unknown reason, I, I I'll draw a comparison real quick. Um, I don't like the Seahawks for an, a reason that I can't explain. Kind of like DJ doesn't like Michael Tarver for a reason he can't explain. He sucks. Um, That's why I don't like Michael Tarver. He's terrible. He, I mean, he's a pretty decent rapper. Like, I still think that we should get a song for our, uh, <laughs> uh, for Michael Tarver. I would, I would accept it. Okay? <laughs> I would accept it. <laughs> you didn't even see the man wrestle one time, and you're like, he's terrible. He's the worst. He, he had his own custom mask. It had a terrible. Tarver. The guy's a knucklehead. I love Michael Tarver, and if he ever wants to come on the show, he is invited. Um, <laughs> but I I gotta go with the Seahawks because I, at the end of the day, it's the Cowboys. That that's really all you need to say. It's the Cowboys. Come on, Cowboy. Cowboy. Oh, ca- <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I gotta go. Yeah, gotta go with the Seahawks here. I mean, the, the Cowboys. The, the Cowboys are the, the, the head and shoulders. You know, again by default, the best team in the NFC East. But the the one thing, the one thing that is for certain, the Cowboys. You can score on them. For, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is uh, you know, about that. And, and like you. Like DJ, like you said, like they, they still have some good pieces, but for just for some reason, people just torch them down the field. I, I I don't know what it is, whatever. They, I mean, and and Russ is playing at an MVP like level, uh, and and he's he he has increasingly gotten better and better and better and better as the years go on. But but yeah, but you know, being at home, I think Metcalf is going to have a Big day against them, um, and then yeah, again their their defense is, is filthy. Yes, I'm going to go with the Seahawks. 
All right, moving into the Buccaneers versus the Broncos. This is a tough one. Um, I don't know if he will come back this week. I would think he would. I think it's going to be Jeff Driscoll playing again. Jeff Driscoll, then the Buccaneers definitely win this game. Um, I mean, Jeff Driscoll gave up a pretty good effort, especially more so in the second half against the Steelers. Um, I wish he could have pulled it out, but uh, I mean, I think the Buccaneers are just too good. I mean, I know it felt like week one we were like, uh, are the Buccaneers good or like are they bad or like do we need to go check and make sure the right time is out there? Like, like, like they got they must have Tom Haiti or something. Like, what, what, I mean, this is not Tom Brady at all. Bro. So, I mean. I think the Bucks. You know, we we talked about it last week. <laughs> it was either gonna go one way or the other. Either the Bucks were gonna just completely spiral downward and be like the the best team that was ever created that ended up just spiraling out of control, or they're just gonna you know find a way to, to come back from it. And I feel like Bruce Arians is a good enough coach to where like the the uh, former couldn't really happen. You know, I, I mean, I think he's a good enough coach to, and this is probably some of the most fun he's had uh, in terms of, uh, you know, every single piece. They got so many pieces, and Winter Fournette is finding himself uh, at this point now, too. Uh, so I got to go with the Bucks. Um, let's go with Justin. Um, I mean, if Jeff Driscoll's playing, yeah, dude, the Bucks are going to win here. Um, and I was going to go to the Bucks anyway because, you know, I got to pick. You know, the Justin way is where I pick outside my division, back around, and back into a different division, and this, you know, everything. And DJ's just showing all the hand motions. <laughs> um, yeah, Bucks are going to win here. You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. He's going with the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going that's, with the Milwaukee Bucks. That's hockey for those who don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's Tampa Tom. That's that's what we're gonna call him from now on. Tampa Not Tom. Tampa Baby. No, it's 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 baby! the, the, two, the, the, the <laughs> <laughs> the team is Tampa Bay Bay, but the quarterback is Tampa Tom, uh, and that's what I'm going to call him from now on, Tampa Tom, because it just works. Um, I But again, I, I don't know how Tampa cannot be good this year. I mean, you have Tom Brady and Gronk. Sorry, like uh, <coughs> Cleveland. What? Cleveland. He's comparing them to Cleveland. Cleveland. That's how. That's exactly how. Okay. That's a that's an insult. All of those guys: Olivier Vernon, Miles Garrett. I mean, but like Tom Brady <laughs> and Gronk. Come on now, like. I, but Gronk ain't who he used to be. Well, yes. and also, I don't know how active he's gonna be because I don't know if he's still doing stuff with WWE. Like, I don't know what's going on with that. Um, no, nah, he ain't doing stuff with WWE right now. Yeah, they're definitely not using him much. I, I see OJ Howard out there more than I see him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I still, I, I'm going with the Bucks. Um, I, I think they got this. All right, Adam. Well, the other thing to whatever though, I think the Bucks should cut Gronk after they realize that Vince takes a better bump than Gronk does. But um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and the other thing too. Here's the other thing. I I, I went back and watched the uh, the clips of the the Bucks and the uh, Panthers. Gronk Gronk is is not the same guy. He is he is done to me. You just switch him out with OJ Howard permanently and just have Gronk uh-huh. in some some fake packages, you know, oh, down yeah, by the goal line or whatever. But he, and so I'm saying he is a monster. Whatever though, I mean, like Gronk will will have will have a couple catches, you know, here and there, whatever. But I mean, but regardless, across the board, this is the best talent Tom's ever had. Whatever though, and that's and that's even with the whenever that was the 07 year when he had Randy Moss. 
it's just like now, like he's obviously that, that was you know 13 years ago. I mean, like now he actually has a running game, which even before Tom getting there, that was really the only thing that that Tampa really needed to take some some shit off of uh, Jameis. Because, you know, Arians was just having him air raid, whatever, though, and he threw as many touchdowns as he did interceptions. It was insane. And, and again, you know, like, J- Jameis is, is entertaining to, you know, to a certain degree, but, you know, like, he was – you can't you can't have a guy throw that many in- interceptions and expect to keep their job. So, the, obviously, they're, they're well in tech to keep Tom Brady – or what, what was that, Casey? Tampa Tom? It's yeah, Tampa Tom. Dude, don't even get me started on hockey pads. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, to me, th- this is going to be Bucks huge. Now, what Bucks are we talking about here? Are we talking about the young Bucks? Yeah, we're talking about this is the young Bucks, the, right? Oh, balding Buck and Road Warrior Buck. <laughs> 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 I, I should just uh, shave this and get my mutton chops in line. <laughs> <laughs> Moving into the Lions versus the Cardinals, I think this is an easy win for the Cardinals because I absolutely think the Cardinals are a destructive force in the league right now. DeAndre Hopkins has shown his importance easily. Uh, Kyler Murray has shown how dangerous he is. Um, you know, and I think just Larry Fitzgerald's presence, he may not have a get a number that he typically would have being the number one guy, but like I mean we talk about the Texans not having anybody to account for, you leave Larry Fitzgerald open and see what happens I mean, you put a you put a scrub corner on Larry Fitzgerald and tell me what happens like, that, that, I mean let's be honest uh, so, I'm going Cardinals Cardinals easily, Cardinals easily win this one, I think the Cardinals easily win this one because I feel like if you put a scrub, uh I mean, you ain't got but so many great corners in the league. A lot of a lot of teams don't have, but but probably two. So you know, I mean, DeAndre Hopkins is taking up one, Larry's taking up the other. I mean, of course, you got Christian Kirk uh, out there too. So it's like there, there's so many different ways that uh, the Cardinals can go. Kendrick coming out of the backfield too. Kyler Murray can can beat you with his legs. I gotta go with the Cardinals. Plus, the grass is still in play. The grass, the Corona grass, this time the Corona grass is still in play. You grow it on the outside. You know you got to put a mask over it. Though. You got to make sure that the grass. You got to disinfect it. You got you got to get them alcohol wipes. You got to disinfect it. Right. You know, did right. did anybody did anybody see that touchdown dance? By the way, in the Raiders and <laughs> yeah, the Saints <laughs> game where they all did the <laughs> air air. Uh, disinfectants and then they all jumped and hugged. I thought that was funny. Um yeah it's gonna be an easy one for me. Easy one here. I'm just gonna go with the Cardinals there. I mean <laughs> DeAndre Hopkins. I mean who knew that but just having you know just having one more receiver going, oh yeah they're a great team now. They're, that's all they needed. Was just get DeAndre Hopkins. The Hopkins, Hop Hopkins. If I can speak right now, but yeah. That, that, and he, he, I mean, DeAndre and Larry got him flabbergasted. He can't even speak at this point. Imagine defensive coordinators. <laughs> what 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 that boy name? Hopkins. Hopkins. Nah. Ha- <laughs> <laughs> nah, but yeah. Yeah, DeAndre Hopkins, he's a monster. <laughs> Chasey. Did you just say Chasey? Chasey? <laughs> Don't call him Chase. I still have I still have memories of that. Um Chase. Anyway. <laughs> stop Chasey. my name. My my name was literally on the screen and he kept calling me Chase. <laughs> I, Cassie. I, that would have been better. That would have been close. <laughs> At least it would have been the. Anyway, yeah, yeah C- Cardinals. Be could... Mark my words. One day, the Lions <laughs> are gonna have a winning season. It's it's just gonna be in like thirty seven years. <laughs> yeah. uh, Adam. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm a, I gotta go. I gotta go with the Cards too. I mean, it's just be like the Cardinals. The Cardinals finished last season, you know, very, very, very strong. I mean, and they, you know, came out at, out of the gate this year and, and beat the Niners, a healthy Niners, mind you. And um, I mean, it's just it's just scary right now that like it can be third and nine, and it's Kyler busting off a scramble, or it's like, oh, I've got DeAndre and I'm a Um <laughs> They've got he, they've got he, he's got a plethora of weapons to work with, including including himself. Whatever that yeah, Kingsbury's got them playing good. So yeah, I'm and now that whatever I'm going to say, Cardinals big. All right, Packers versus the Saints. By the way, the Saints looked last week, and the way Aaron Rodgers is looking right now is not. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know I'm not the biggest fan of A. A. Ron. Oh no, you're the biggest fan of A. 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 Ron. Of A. A. Ron. <laughs> but he balling. He balling right now. I mean, that don't mean he's gonna win the Super Bowl or nothing. Like he gonna put up. His Best team. quarterback ever, right? Yeah. Am I right? I, I mean, you know. I didn't even hear what you said. I said best quarterback ever, right? Oh, stop it. Stop it. Best, I, I, he's knew the, to, he's I knew the, I had to get you to repeat that. I knew I needed we, to repeat that. He's the best. We all know, we all know it's Peyton Manning. Get it right. Anybody <laughs> say something stupid is going to feel my wrath. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with the Packers. I think it's gonna. It should be a good game. It should be a good game. But the way that the Saints looked last week, I don't know. Aaron Rodgers has been torching everybody, so I'm going with Aaron Rodgers. I think he. I think he's a little upset about that Jordan Love draft pick. Um, and not that he needed any more motivation. <laughs> like, let's be honest. But just. Oh man! How I mean. I want to go with the Saints. I, I really do. I, I I really do. But that game out of the last week with uh, Packers and Lions. I mean, man, I don't know how Lions blew that lead. That, that was just <laughs> they're the new Bengals. They're the, they're the new Bengals of the. What's that? Maybe they just they just the current line. Yeah, maybe. I think I think that you're on the sun there. Um nah. The Packers are gonna win here. I think this is gonna be or hope it's gonna be a good game. And that, that Saints game, I I was expecting more out of that game on Monday night. Like I w- really wasn't expecting the Raiders to beat them, like and especially yeah, I just wasn't expecting that to happen. Yes, you were. No, not, not at all. No Michael Thomas, no problem. <laughs> no Michael Thomas, no problem. <laughs> I like uh, that. Um, but no, I got the Go Pack Go. The, the Cheeseheads. The Cheeseheads are winning. <laughs> hey, A-Ron. No, hey, A-Ron today. <laughs> You mean Aaron? Son of a! <laughs> I love that sketch so much. Uh, they, but yeah, no. I is this even a question? Come on, it's the Saints. Get, you got to go with the go, pack, go. I would be legitimately surprised if the Saints somehow won this game. So much Saints is pretty. Yeah, well, I, I have to I have to agree with uh, Cassie there as well, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but but yeah, I mean, like I, I think I think Peyton is is gonna Sean Payton's gonna have them show up better than you know than the, this past Monday, whatever though. But like, I mean, nostalgic right there when you said Peyton. I thought you said Peyton. That's, I thought you were about to say Peyton. That's why, Manning. Yeah, that's why. Yes, what? That's why I said when I said Peyton. I'm like, wait a minute. No, not <laughs> not the foundation. Why is on your side? Um, like, that's, <laughs> that's why I'm like, no, I got to go with Sean. Whatever. Though. But here's the thing. Why? Why does it always look like Sean Payton's trying to 
blow somebody a kiss. <laughs> it does. <laughs> You're not wrong about that. That's or or, he, or he's, he just smelled something and he's trying to dissect it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was the same thing with Wade Phillips. He always looked like he was taking a dump at that exact moment. <laughs> um, yeah, I I know, but that's what I'm saying. You know, like what does Wade Phillips smell like? Depends. Um, <laughs> but um, anyway, let me make my pick. Damn it! So, yes, go, go pack, go pack, go. Um, <laughs> moving into the Monday Night Football game, Chiefs versus Ravens, the, the coup de gras, as they say. Now, hey, DJ, here's what we'll do for this one. I'll let you go last, and I'll go second to last, and Casey, go first. The Chiefs for some sort of crazy reason. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We can do that. We can do that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to put Casey up a top there. Uh, so, you know what? Let's switch the order up a little bit. And let's start with Adam. Chiefs for Ravens. Okay. And this this is going to be, I, to me, this is going to be the most fun game of the week. Um, and again, like I said, I think it's just going to be a Madden fest and it's just going to be high scoring all around. Like, I think this is where the Ravens get off the Shanide against against the Chiefs and, and squeak this one out. Casey. First of all, can we can we talk about the fact that um, Red Kingdom is about the Chiefs, not about the Republican Party? I just need to get that out of the way. Yeah. I swear to God, if I see one more person make a video with that song supporting the Republican Party, I am going to lose my shit. And anyway. back it up then. Well, the other thing too, I'm like, like, do you guys realize that Tech Nine does not like, and and he is pro Black Lives Matter, and you guys are using him as if because they like, oh, it has red in it. Make that part of our theme. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. A, a, anyway, uh, uh, sorry, Justin. I gotta go with the, the with the Ravens, the winning team. The, I don't care. Not yeah. Hate on hate on my team. I don't care. All right. All right. Well, yeah. finally got some love from Chasey. Justin. <laughs> um. I mean, hey, you know, you guys can hate. You guys can hate. You know, MPs. It's gonna show what he's about. You know, Pat Patty Mahomes. You know, we're gonna have we're gonna it's gonna be a tough game. Like, um I just yeah, request gonna... that you never call him Patty Mahomes again, please. <laughs> and if, if I was a girl, dude, I would love what? to date Patrick. What? What is happening? What is I don't know. Like, dude, I just I just ladies and gentlemen, thank you that, for that's... tuning in. That'll be the end of the uh <laughs> that'll be the end of the show. No, no, but What's this behind be door really... number three? He sounds like Kermit <laughs> the that? Frog. Uh, uh, no, this could be a really good game, though. Um, I think T- Tyreek Hill, he's going to have to go off in this game. Also, we're gonna need to, I'm going to need to see more from Travis Kelsey in this game. I feel like he hasn't been doing a whole that much these last couple weeks, so he's going to need to do some stuff here. Um, also, I, I need to see more of Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins, he's been like non-existent also. So I definitely need to see a lot of Sammy Watkins here. Um, and also, I love Edwards, dude. Edwards, he's amazing. But, you know, maybe I'm just being really biased because, you know, I'm a big Chief. You know, that's my favorite team, the Chiefs. Gee, you think? So, uh, but the Ravens, they... That's gonna be, oh man, it's, it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna, this game might give me anxiety a little bit. You don't always have to go for your team. I'm just throwing it out there. 
but I do though, you know, because if I wasn't going for my team, then I wouldn't have any faith in them. You know, oh, you can always have faith in your team. And you know, after coming off the Super Bowl, we running it back this year. What's that? We're doing a bet. We are doing a bet. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, but nah, Chiefs are winning here. I, I, I assume you go with the Chiefs. Um, so when he said Edwards, he was talking about Gus, <laughs> Gus Edwards, the Gus Bus. Uh, yeah, Gus. <laughs> he was talking about the Gus Bus. Uh, so, uh, so y'all look out, you know, Chiefs fans. Y'all can't have him though. Y'all can't have Gus. <laughs> um, uh, also, Justin is is the most sus one out of all of us. Um, we, we have uh, came to that conclusion. Um, but nonetheless, Ravens <laughs> Chiefs. I agree with Adam and Casey, and not Justin. I think. Well, you guys are gonna be all wrong. You guys are gonna be all I wrong. Think, but. It pains me to pick them, but I just I I think this is this is Lamar's <laughs> time to get off the schneid. I think so too. Like like the Chiefs have beat us the last two times we played them. So actually, the last. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, isn't this like the second or third or the third time that he's playing them? I, I thought this would be the fourth. I thought this would yeah, be the fourth year in a row we played them because we played them yeah. with Joe and almost, and we were right, right in that game. I, I'm right. Sure. Um, and then Lamar's first full season, we lost to them. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I could have sworn. I think it might be four times in a row, which is weird. I, I guess it's just weird that we would play the same team four times in a row. Uh, you know, it, and not necessarily in the playoffs, just more so in the regular season. But, um, but yeah, so I think this will be the time where Lamar finally gets his win against Patrick Mahomes because he is 0 2 against Patrick Mahomes. Um, so I think this will be the time that he finally get, gets the win. And I, I just hope it's closer than it typically is because it ends up being close, but it's always pretty much a blowout in the Chiefs' favor. They always end up just blowing us away with their offense, uh, and then we end up having to come back and maybe make it one score because we had to come back late in the game and just ran out of time. Uh, so I'm hoping that we keep up or get some sort of turnover or something like that uh, to get after Patrick Mahomes and kind of in some way disrupt him a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm a little fearful of the offensive line, even though the Chiefs' defense doesn't necessarily scare me that that you know too terribly much. I still feel like. Uh, the Ravens I mean, pressure. I mean, when our pass rush, I mean, when, when we when we needed the most, it, it comes in. Our pass rush gets there. I, I, and, and that's, that's exactly. So I'm hoping uh, that the Ravens protect them a little bit. Better. But Lamar can scramble really good. He's he's man. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I I, I agree. I just hope that the Ravens can uh, get over this hump. This is the hump besides the playoff hump, of course. Uh, this is the other loss that we end up taking throughout the season. Uh, ends up being to the Chiefs in some form or fashion. And I think this game right here is going to be the deciding factor on who has number one seed in the playoffs this year. I think it could be a deciding factor on who goes to the Super Bowl because it's ironic yeah. that we've lost to the Chiefs the last two years and mm -hmm. got, got out in the first round of the playoffs in both of those, both of those periods. I, I don't think it necessarily correlates, but it's, it's ironic how it works. Lamar also, AFC Championship, Chiefs, and Ravens this year? It could be. It could be. It could be. Who knows? Uh, you know, I hope that that's what happens. Please, Tennessee, don't do it again. Thanks. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm going. I'm, go, I'm going with Baltimore first. Uh, I think I think they can get this. Uh, it's gonna be tough, not the best, but I, I, you know, I mean, it, and and like the the good part about it is, even if they were to lose, there's no shame in losing to the Chiefs per se. So it's yeah, like, yeah, I, I have to say the same thing. You know, if I mean, if we do lose, we you know, it's gonna be a close game, and like there's. See, my first few, um, you know, I always got really upset when the Chiefs lost to the um, Patriots, like especially Patrick Mahomes' first year when he was playing, you know, because when he was, you know, 
making some really dumb mistakes or something like, you know, just threw a pick or something. You know, I kind of got upset, but I mean, I, I mean, I would be upset if they do lose, but I won't be that upset because it, it's going to be a good game no matter what. So, yeah. yeah. But uh, I I'm just gonna add that uh, we're uh, definitely uh, Adam is invited back anytime for the picks. Um, I also want to get him on one of our wrestling discussions because uh, he and I talk about wrestling and football a lot um and some other things like politics but we won't get into that <laughs> um but definitely want to get him on one of our uh discussions i think we got a, a couple coming up that we keep putting off but uh we definitely gotta do that but um we yeah. have three podcast words through our messaging yeah <laughs> yeah pretty much we uh we always have the discussions so definitely uh uh, a good addition, I, I think, to one of our. If you move, <laughs> if you if move, <laughs> I, I have to send that to DJ. He's yeah, I, I need to see that. Do that seem? Uh... If you move, <laughs> <laughs> the most intentionally hilarious promo <laughs> you will ever hear. He does so good without saying anything, but you're like, I want to see this guy beat the shit out of somebody. <laughs> There's a change in the coming. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So we definitely got some things coming up. Um, We're going to try to get on a more consistent schedule. I know we say that a lot around here, around these parts. Uh, (laughs) We have a Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcast account to keep up. (laughs) So so now we kind of have to be somewhat more consistent. But uh, but nonetheless, we're going to do our best. Uh, this will be on, on Spotify as well. The picks will be weekly on, on Spotify. Uh, last week, I, I kind of had a snap for it. forgot. But uh, anyway, we'll see you guys on whatever the next pick show, discussion, whatever we may have. Thanks, everybody, for coming by. We'll see you guys on the next one. Be sure to like the page, share the video, whatever you got to do. We'll see you guys.